This is uh, showing how to do an internal sinus lift without trauma. This case is just an illustration. Uh, this is right after implant insertion. You could see there's a cloud of bone. This is at abutment connection six months later. You can see the bone is condensated. This is the case we're going to be doing today. There is um, approximately two millimeters of tissue depth and approximately eight, seven millimeters of bone available. We're going right through the tissue. This is going to be flapless. Uh, the insertion point is directly through the tissue with a two millimeter pilot drill. We're going to stop just below the, um, the bone level. We're not going to penetrate all the way through. Um, as we continue, we're going to, with the drill, until we are able to put in a pilot drill, a pilot point. Uh, and now here is the pilot being inserted just below the level of the bone. And you can see that there is a couple of millimeters left. But instead of using a tremendous trauma, to go ahead and continue penetrating. We're going to use a micro uh, diamond. We're going to enlarge the hole from 2 millimeters to 2.8 so that we have enough room to insert a round diamond burr and slowly erode away the, the floor of the sinus so that it does not require too much trauma to elevate the bone in place, the uh, elevate the sinus in place, the bone in place. We're continuing our drilling sequence until we're at 2.8 millimeters in diameter, down to the previous depth stop. This is a uh, this is the drill we're going to be using, which is a, a latch type uh, diamond available from Salvin. You can see it uh, connected to a uh, drill extender, and now uh, we're going to be using it. Um, and now instead, we also have the opportunity, if you wish, to use a low speed uh, long latch burr on a four to one handpiece, again having less than a two millimeter uh, diameter, or two, and a, two and a half millimeter diameter of a, of a um, diamond, and it's going to slowly drill and slowly erode away the bone so that we don't have to traumatize the patient by over compressing with a hammer in the area. And we keep checking the depth as we drill and to see and make sure that we're not uh, too close to the sinus. Again, slow, slow erosion with the diamond. This is at approximately 1,000 RPM in a 2.8 millimeter osteotomy. We know that, we're, that the tissue plus the bone is approximately 9 millimeters. That's what we're measuring. And now we're also feeling to see if we have a little bit of bounce from the sinus Schneiderian membrane. And we're using our depth gauge so we, can, and we do feel it that we've penetrated a bit to, through the bone, but we can feel a little bit of the Schneiderian membrane. Once we have that in place, we can then... For this procedure, we're going to be using Seagraft. Seagraft is a granular and very porous material made from an algae that's calcified with calcium phosphate. The porosity allows uh, bone cells to enter and regenerate and resorb it rather nicely, and it turns into bone with very little of the original substrate available after a few months, which is very nice. The other nice thing is in the way it handles. It clumps. Here you have it with a little bit of blood. We tend to use a little blood or perhaps gentamicin ophthalmological solution, which will cushion the blow of the uh, sinus uh, impact of the uh, hammer so that we don't risk tearing the membrane. And we're going to go ahead and place a bit of bone uh, on, into, the, into the osteotomy that we have formed. And because we have done that, we should then be able to compress the bone first by turning it by hand and uh, the osteotome by hand uh, in a clockwise or counterclockwise fashion. The osteotome, uh, and then we're going to go ahead and tap it into place. Watch the tip and watch how deep it goes. It should, and how little force is necessary to compress the area. And we're com continuing to compress the bone, the uh, bone graft material, which is osteograft N300. And you can see that we're turning the osteotome counterclockwise to do part of our compression. Now, the reason why we just don't put direct force is direct force by hand is uncontrolled, and we have run a danger of perforating all the way through and tearing the Schneiderian membrane. By doing rotation, we can use the walls of the osteotomy as a friction stop and have further control during compression. Again, we're reloading another um, 
bolus of bone into the osteotomy site. Remember that there's no flap, and this is done, being done completely through the tissue. As it's being pressed into place, again, no direct pressure, just turning the, uh, the osteotome in a clockwise direction and placing a bit of force at the apical to force the bone in and continuing elevating the sinus. Okay. Once we've done that several times, we are now ready to go ahead and finally drill to our final diameter. The reason why we don't drill to the final diameter of, let's say in this case, three and a half millimeters for a uh, 4.1 diameter body blue sky bio implant is because, we, because we're placing lateral force on the osteotomy when we do it in compression, we can over increase the size of the, imp the osteotomy and that could lead to lack of stability of the initial implant placement. Now we've loaded on a blue sky bio implant um, onto a, uh, an mountless hand piece driven insertion tool and now we're able to place the blue sky bio implant directly through the tissue without elevating a flap with our mountless holder attached to the handpiece so that we do not have to struggle with two hands to disengage a mount which we do not have. This is critical in cases where there is a limited amount of bone height for stabilization of the implant. If we would have a limited amount of bone height stabilizing the implant, as in this case, using two hands to disengage an implant mount on a different type of system, not Blue Sky Bio, could lead to micro-movement of the implant and failure of the implant osseo integration. By using a mountless design, it's a simple matter, once it's all the way seated, to just give a little tug and the mount is disengaged. This is the post-op showing a 12 millimeter implant inserted into what was previously just an 8 millimeter uh, availability of bone. Here's the case we showed in the beginning and again the same type of technique. The first one didn't need a sinus lift. The second one you can see that the implant is already placed further and again you can see the cloud of bone above it and then six months later the abutments are in place and bone has formed completely around the implants. Blue Sky Bio implants also have a unique feature, a handpiece driven implant system. If your choice is to place it with an, a handpiece, you can do so. And it is a mountless design, so there's no struggling with two hands to remove the mount. It goes in smoothly with the handpiece system of your choice, driving home nicely, and instead of having to struggle, you just simply give a tug and the driver is removed and now you're ready to go ahead and place your cover screw if you wish. Blue Sky Bio implants are available exclusively on the web at www.blueskybio.com. They offer a Strauman compatible implant, compatible to Strauman implants and solid abutments that are easy to place, strong, and are predictable at $95. We would like to thank the uh, producers of Seagraft. Without this material and its easy clumping capability, it would be almost impossible to do a flapless sinus lift because the material would just flow around and not be contained.